So I was wondering if the skills that I learned as a classical percussionist would transfer well to the marching world. And I found it to be pretty okay, actually. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. You guys have been telling me to do this for a long time. So I, as a classical percussionist, am going to attempt some marching front ensemble music. But before we do that, thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Wolf Lina, Marimba Morris, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlisle, Sanction Han, Scott Rader, Greg Harris, and Dean P. Newberger. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Britton Anderson. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash adam or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. Hope you've been well, hope you've been staying safe. And yes, today is the day I'm going to be playing some marching music on the marimba. A couple of you guys showed me these learn the music videos for different marching shows, which have the video on screen and have the sheet music underneath. And you told me that I should learn one of these parts. And I've always been curious to see just how difficult these marching parts are when you actually have the music. I've been a percussionist who has been learning mostly classical percussion since I was about 13 years old. And now I am too old. I studied percussion all the way to master level and I've been playing marimba for quite a few years now. So I was wondering if the skills that I learned as a classical percussionist would transfer well to the marching world. And so the excerpt that I'm going to be attempting to play in today's video is none other than 2018 Boston Crusaders SOS. This excerpt in this show is actually referred to as Marimba Spiritual because it is based on a very popular, very seminal work for solo marimba entitled Marimba Spiritual. It's by Minoru Miki. I've talked about it a lot on this show. It is an absolute S tier work. I mean, this is an easy S tier for me. Let's go right up there. Truly one of the most legendary works to emerge out of the mid 20th century for solo marimba. And I was not really that surprised to see it featured in a marching context because it really is just that good. But before I show you how I went in playing with the Boston Crusaders, I'm gonna use my perspective as a classical percussionist to go through this video with you guys first. I'm gonna tell you the differences and similarities with the original work. And I'm also going to tell you how I managed to learn this excerpt in under three hours using the same method that I use to learn all classical percussion pieces, you can check out my video on that over here. Or if you'd like to skip the explanation and you just like to watch me play with the Boston Crusaders, you can use the timestamp below. So yeah, I've watched this video many times now as I was practicing it, and I'll explain to you how I did it after we watch it once first. I always feel like they rush this bit, but maybe I'm just counting it wrong. Three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, crash and three and two, three, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This snare bit always throws me off. One, two, three, go. <laughs> this part is so fun. Yeah, so that's basically the video, okay? And it's, when you first listen to it, it's mainly the speed that makes it sound difficult because it is 200 BPM. That is quite tricky, you know, if you play straight laterals at 200. You know, it is pretty difficult. Other than that though, I actually think this arrangement isn't too bad. It's, as you can see, if we just scroll through it quickly. Okay, so the first part is mainly just independent strokes. This is probably the easiest part in the whole piece. And it's just all hand to hand, um, even though they do give you like a small double at the end of this phrase here, two, two. 
just so you can get to the next part easily. By the way, I couldn't find the actual PDFs of this. They've changed the website ever since they released this video. So I couldn't find an actual sheet music version. I had to literally just read through the video. It was kind of like karaoke for marimba. <laughs> yeah, it's a very easy starting point. You got this dun dun, these popped accents in the right hand. And then you go dun 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 dun. This triplet. Uh, quaver thing, da -da 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 -da. that's pretty easy. And then you got this little swung bit, da -dum, da -dum, and da -da -da -da, which is all just the same notes in both hands, C, F, C, F, D, G, D, G, and then D, G, D, G, E, A, E, A, so that's pretty easy. And then you can see in this part here, before C, they use the right hand, this is a very common thing in marching, they're always thinking of the next position, I've noticed. So he goes da -da 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 with his right hand, and then his left hand is free to play the next section, which is down here, D and A. So da 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 boom bam bam bam. So this is just one two, two middle mallets, two middle mallets, and right hand. So so far up to here, this is pretty easy. I found this part to be quite straightforward. Okay, so moving on from section C. Okay, so we have this part here. Do do da da do da da do. That's pretty easy. It's just parallel fourths. So you got your fourth on the right hand, and you play A D in the first part. So again, what I was saying before with marching is that a lot of these runs because they prioritize projection and they prioritize speed, they tend to make them simpler. That doesn't mean they're easy to play, it just means that they're simpler to learn the notes. But when it comes to technically playing it, that's where the difficulties start to arise. So for me, so far, this part is pretty uh, idiomatic. And then you've got this small crescendo. This part, both hands are in fourths. Your right hand is playing G, C. Your left hand is playing D, G. Right? So you've got the fourth, and then you're just shifting it up. So da 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 And most people, I think, would be able to do this lateral because it's just two notes. Da 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 And then you get to this one. Da do da da, which is just again double verticals, still in fourths. Da do da da. So yes, these three bars all together, just fourths. Nothing too difficult. I basically just played it through at 50% speed, 60% speed, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100%. And then we get to letter D. Da da. Do, 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 do. So you've got da da, which is the big accents at the top. Again, parallel fourths, same notes in both hands, G, C, G, C, A, D, A, D. And then you've got da 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 da, which is just a jump down. Now, so far up to here, some of it is the same as the original and some of it isn't. So, sorry, I forgot to mention this. When you go back to the beginning, this and even the taiko section, it's loosely based on the original. They've kind of made like an extended version where it just repeats, it kind of mirrors itself. It goes and it just reverses. And then the battery line, I believe, does the Yeah, that's a very clever way of interpreting it. And then letter B is the same as the original piece. And this part, this da 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 um, is not the same. That is just an improvisation that they've made, which is, yeah, it's more in the marching style, this sort of single line triplet, right? Da -da 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 -da. And they've also omitted the bit that comes after this in the original, which is the... I think is one of the more difficult runs to get very clear, uh, but it makes sense. When you have, you know, projection as the main goal, you want to simplify the runs. Dum, 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 at letter C. That is in the original. Yes, correct. This doesn't exist in the original, but they've kind of made it work. And it sounds very impressive to have that. It sounds very articulate. Anyway, so yeah, loosely based on the original so far, but not really the same. Yes, this part is the original. This 6 4 version is more of a marching style rhythmic flex. Um, it never changes time signature in the original, I don't think. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Um, that was one of the sections that I would sometimes fall behind on the beat when I was practicing it on marimba. So I had to make sure to be more in front. And then you have this bit here. This part is a little bit tricky. But when you realize that the left hand is just playing DG, 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 with the lateral, so your left hand doesn't move and it's just the right hand doing all the work. They tend to do this thing where they prioritize the right hand and the left hand does all these little diddles. So yeah, very interesting, different style. Yeah, it works and it sounds cool when you put it in an ensemble. That part actually, the accents and the dynamics are tricky to get because you've got to go. You've got to aim for the highest 
thing. Da -da -dun 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 and they do a really good job of it in the video. Although some people in the video comments were saying that whoever's playing this marimba is quite stiff. I do have to agree if you watch like... See, his hands are like really like stiff. Um, but it, it works. Maybe we're over judging it or something. Anyway. That's, that's not the point of today's video. Then you got this dotted thing. Dun, 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 That is such a marching style thing, you know, like the uh, four against three polyrhythm. Yeah, very interesting. Again, not in the original, of course, but it has this really nice unity feeling when everyone in the ensemble does it. Then you have a single line run. Yes, a lot of marching arrangements have single line runs punctuated by double verticals. So, do, 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 just basically D minor, the natural minor. So if you know your D minor scale, that's no problem at all. I am very interested to see that there's such an extreme dynamic change. We go from MP to triple F and to this point, triple F has not been used before. And then it says triple F again. I think that's just score formatting, but I think that's quite funny how it just suddenly goes super loud. Anyway, yes, this triplet run doesn't exist in the original either. Letter E. Do da 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 do da da. This part does exist, yes. Very similar, the way they spike the accents in the right hand. Yes, very similar. And I really like that they play with the dynamics there. The do da do do da do. It's like really soft. It's like dark light, dark light. This part here is a simplified version. This da 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 da. And I believe it gets passed around the ensemble. So I think someone else plays the lateral in between um, in these rests. Let's listen a second. Yeah, you can hear something going. Da -da 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 this section is a simplified version of the originals one, which is. That is one of the coolest runs ever because it just comes out of nowhere. It's very hard to predict where it's going. It sounds super wild and super energetic. I really love that run, and I understand why they didn't put it in here because it's too tonally complex for marching. Um, environments like big stadiums again you care about projection the most but yeah it would have been nice to have something a little bit more like that than this version when I was learning this part this 4231 it's really just you just put it there and then you just shift it down an octave and it's not too difficult at all double, bubble, bubble, bum. yeah double, 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 double. again it's kind of like a variation of the real thing and the crash of course there's no crash <laughs> relatively straightforward in terms of nodes in terms of rhythm no real issues now, the next part is basically just a lot of nodding and a lot of rest and you got one crash there. Now, we get to this section and it says with M277s. Now, I'm not very familiar with what M277 mallets are, but I'm, by the looks of them, they look like rattan shaft mallets and they look like lighter or just more articulate because this section needs to sound like... This section does exist in the original. And the sticking, I believe, is almost the same and it is at this speed. So this part for me was difficult because I needed to get it at the speed. So what I did was I took mallet one and two, as you can see in these lateral runs, one and two always stays the same for each um, pattern. So for this one, A, D, C, D, and then mallets four and three in the right hand are always on one note. So you always end up in this T position where your right hand, just like the guy in the video is doing, you can see his right hand is horizontal, his left hand is vertical. And what I did first was I just played the left hand. A, C, A, C, A, C, C, D, D, F, D, F, D, F, F, G. Do, 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 do. And that for me is quite doable. And then I would do the opposite. Da, 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 in the right hand. And then I would put it together. And I guess the only thing that made it difficult is just the coordination of one, four, two, three. It's not the permutation that people practice a lot. Normally we're the best at one, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one. I managed to get it when I just focused my energy on that do, 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 do. So practicing just the left hand there helped a lot. And if we just keep going, it's very fast. Yeah, and it's basically just slowly moving towards the middle of the instrument. So I guess they wanted to make some sort of tonal shift and some sort of dynamic shift. So it ends on a crotchet, which is nice, which gives you time to get to the next section. So your marching music, again, very idiomatic and very convenient. It's very nice to play, like, cause you can just like put it there and it works. Okay, so this section here looks like it's very difficult, but actually when you break it down the same way I broke down the previous section by looking at the separate hands, it's not that hard. The sticking is just four, two, three, one, three, two, which when you're playing on a marimba, your right hand is going to be on the black notes for the first three bars and then the last bar it switches. But yeah, usually it's one hand on the top, one hand on the bottom. A flat, E flat, 
in the right hand, FC in the left hand. And you're basically, so I should go this way, <laughs> you're basically just shifting the right hand upwards and the left hand stays in the same place for the first bar. So it goes from A flat, E flat to A flat, D flat, which if you're on a marimba, that's basically just a straight shift. And then the next bar, same thing, you just shift the whole set up. So the left hand plays C and F, the right hand plays E flat and B flat. And yep, nice and square. Uh, the intervals are not like octaves or seconds, anything weird like that. It's really just very straightforward. Again, very interesting notation here. You don't need to write sim three times. <laughs> I think we get it after the first time. Anyway, yeah, so the sticking is the same for this. But it sounds really impressive when it's fast. <laughs> the last one is the same sticking, but it stays the same for both beats. So you got uh, F, B natural, F, B, B, F, B, B. This particular bar here sounds a lot like Masa Echu. <laughs> Just the, the, the harmony, it sounds so much like Masa Echu. Like, listen to this. Doesn't that sound like Masa Echu to you? <laughs> I don't know, old school style harmony. Very cool. Um, it's not like this in the original, this six, this six tuplet run. It's obviously just a way to give a polyrhythm in this section, create some rhythmic interest. Then we get to this section here, which is just basically A and E in both hands. You got A, E in the right hand, A in the left hand. So da, 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 da. Easy. And really when you're up there, it's very easy to spike the notes because the bars are thicker. So when you spike them, you get a lot more of that bright sound. Ba, 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 ba. That doesn't necessarily exist in this form in the original, but Whatever. This next part does though. This gliss part is one of the most famous things in Marimba Spiritual. I think there's a video of a whole bunch of people playing Marimba Spiritual at the same time. And they do this gliss section and it looks epic. <laughs> It's just so cool seeing them gliss up and down at the same time and it's just such a ferocious move. Now the gliss part is very easy because it's easy to count. It's like and the gliss is just the same notes at the bottom and the top. So the bottom here is A, E, G, D. The top is also A, E, G, D. So that's very easy. And the first quaver is, sorry, eighth note is the same. And this one is a little bit different. The left hand is D, A, C, G. And the right hand is different. It's C, G, B flat, F. So do, ba, ba, you got the seventh chord at the top. Um, but again, very idiomatic. It just literally falls the same way. Okay, then we get to J. We got four fortissimos. I don't know how much harder you can hit the marimba without breaking it. You got da 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 da. It's a very interesting interplay, and this is in the original section as well. It's really cool when you see solo voices doing da 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 da, and they sort of wave their hands like an arch. I think that looks really acrobatic, and they do the same thing in this thing, which is really nice. This one isn't too bad to learn as well because it's actually just the same thing in both hands once again. So you got A E G D and CGB flat F. Hey, hey! <laughs> when they make the syllables hey, it sounds very um, Western. <laughs> I think when people think of shouts in Japanese music, especially this kind of music where it's aggressive and it's more associated with like taiko drumming and stuff like that, it's more like hey, hey! This version is more like hey, hey! <laughs> which sounds very, I don't know, very casual. We get to this part here which goes Right? And that's again just square fifths. So and then here's the last part, you got the crash, and then this part, yes, this part does exist in the original. I call it the fifths slide, because you'll see before I play it to you, you'll see that the left hand changes and just goes down while the right hand is just going b b b b b b b b b the whole way through, and then ba 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 boom. And that would be the end of the original piece. So let's give it a listen. So what I did for this section, because it is just all fifths, is I just did the left hand first. Do, 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 do. And I just checked the spacing of that just to make sure that I don't have to spread my hands too wide. And then your right hand just stays in the same place. So it's just And then you finish. So yeah. 
Sure. So yeah, as a classical percussionist, the actual musical material itself isn't that difficult. It's a very simplified version of Marimba Spiritual, which is more about speed and projection rather than all those intricate, very aggressive runs in the original piece. The techniques used are very simple. We got double vertical strokes. None of them are difficult intervals like octaves or seconds. It's mostly fifths and I think sixes. And then we have lateral strokes and they're usually in short bursts. So basically when I learned this excerpt, I started by setting the video to about 60% speed and just playing along in small sections first and then just gradually speeding it up. And I found it to be pretty okay, actually. And in terms of a homage to the original, I'm glad that they retained some of the original original elements, but a lot of it is more of a marching eyes version, which is, I think it makes sense. Anyway, enough from me. It's time for you to hear the results of me learning this piece, playing with the Boston Crusaders. But if you are enjoying the video so far, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, here's me playing Marimba Spiritual with the Boston Crusaders. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of my rendition of this marching excerpt. I really wanted to give it a good go and represent the home team, the classical percussion team. But at the end of the day, I'm just really happy that, you know, our marimba music is being turned into a more mainstream application. I know there are very big audiences who watch these shows. And yeah, let me know down below if I should do more of these marching challenges. I always think it's very challenging to try music that is not necessarily what I'm used to. And it was a lot of fun trying this out over the week. If you enjoyed my video today, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads as I upload every single week. And make sure you hit that notification bell to know whenever I upload a brand new episode. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.